Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about body recomposition versus bulking and cutting. Now this is probably one of the most common questions I get when it comes to bodybuilding. Should I be recomping or should I go for a bulk or cut strategy? Quick outline for today, we're going to start off by talking about body recomposition, which is the process of building muscle and losing fat at the same time. We'll talk about the pros and cons. Then we'll go on to the pros and cons of bulking and cutting, which is basically where you go through structured phases of trying to build mass and then lose fat in order to maximize muscle growth. Lastly, we'll put everything together to give you some recommendations on whether you should do body recomposition or bulking and cutting. If you've been enjoying my content so far, make sure you smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let's get right into it. All right, so let's start off by talking about body recomposition. As I said, body recomposition is where you try to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. This usually means that you're keeping your scale weight stable, or in some cases, you might actually be losing weight at a slow rate. And there have actually been a lot of studies that show that people can actually build lean tissue while in a calorie deficit. Now, starting off with the pros of body recomposition, it can be an efficient method for beginners. People who are very new to the gym, like in their first year of training, are very sensitive to muscle growth, and they will build muscle pretty easily even if their calories are at maintenance or if they're in a small deficit. So people might argue that you might not get much more in the way of gains even if you added more calories. Next, body recomposition can be a reliable method for people without experience because you're keeping your scale weight pretty stable. What I mean is that for people who are very inexperienced, they might have trouble targeting certain rates of weight gain or weight loss. And it might be easier for them to keep their weight stable and track visual changes in terms of their physique as well as progress in the gym. If your weight is staying stable and you're looking bigger or you're looking visibly leaner, that means you're probably building muscle and losing fat at the same time in order to keep that stable scale weight. And since beginners are able to make rapid progress, they can probably actually see these visual changes happening across weeks and months. Another pro of body recomposition is that you get to avoid the higher body fat ranges. For some people, it's really, really important for them to stay lean year round, and they might just not be able to deal with the fact that their body fat percentage is fluctuating throughout the year, which usually involve a higher calorie deficit and can be quite disruptive to your daily life. Now, in terms of the cons of body recomposition, the main one is that you're gonna get slower results. As you get past the beginner phase, your body really needs a strong stimulus to actually build muscle. And being in a calorie surplus will really facilitate those gains. So what follows from this is that body recomposition just won't work for people who are more advanced. We'll talk about how that applies to you and whether you qualify for this later on in the recommendations. All right, so now let's switch gears and talk about bulking and cutting. Bulking and cutting is where you go through structured phases of massing where you're putting on weight and cutting where you're losing fat. The main pro of bulking and cutting, if done correctly, is that you get faster results. The calorie surplus gives your body the raw materials for growth and it also signals the body to grow. As a simple way of thinking about it, it's basically putting your body in that anabolic state. The idea behind bulking and cutting is that putting on muscle is a difficult and slow process. And when you put on muscle, you'll usually put on some amount of fat as well. On top of that, there's an ideal body fat range for which your body is best at putting on muscle. For men, that's usually around 8 to 15%. And for women, it's around 18 to 25%. So if you're bulking, you're going to put on muscle, but you'll also be putting on some amount of fat. And that means your body fat percentage will slowly creep up until you get to the upper part of that range, at which point you're going to want to go through a fat loss phase to get back to the bottom of the range. And the thing is, if you do it properly, you can go through a fat loss phase where you lose just fat and keep all your muscle. And for that reason, if you go through specific massing and fat loss phases, you'll be able to maximize the amount of muscle growth you get and still lose the fat later on. Now, the main con of bulking and cutting is that it can be less efficient if you bulk and cut incorrectly. This can happen in either of those two phases. And you can end up wasting time if you bulk too fast or if you lose muscle during your fat loss phases. Now, what do I mean by that? In terms of bulking, there's a maximum rate at which your body's actually able to build muscle. And as long as you have enough of a surplus to get that rate of gain, you're gonna maximize your muscle growth. However, if you gain weight at a faster rate than that, you're still not gonna be putting on any more muscle, but you will gain more fat. And the problem with putting on too much fat during your bulking phases means you'll have to spend a lot of time cutting to get the fat off later on, which is time that would be better spent actually being productive, bulking and building more muscle. 
Now the problem with fat loss phases is you can lose muscle if you cut too quickly or you aren't doing your training or diet correctly. All right, so now let's put everything together and give you some recommendations on whether you should go for body recomposition or more of a bulking and cutting strategy. You should recomp if. First of all, you have to meet the criteria for people who are actually able to recomp. I talk more about who can recomp and how to recomp in my body recomposition video, so watch that if you haven't. But briefly, people who are able to recomp typically fall into three categories. The basic principle is that in order to get body recomposition, you need to be able to present a novel and superior stimulus to what you were doing before which means it has to be new and better. People who satisfy this are usually in three main categories. First of all, our beginners, people in their first one to two years of training, where everything in terms of their training and diet is gonna be new and superior to what they were doing before. Then you've got people who are returning from a layoff. So if you took a few months off of training, when you come back to it, your body's gonna be very sensitive to making those gains again. And lastly, you've got people who have suboptimal training and diet who then make major improvements to their plan. Now you probably do have to meet one of those criteria just to be able to body recomp, but if you are able to, when should you do it? A couple of considerations would be, First, if you're on the higher end of body fat to start, which is like 15% or more for males or 25% or more for females. In this case, you probably wouldn't want to start with just a bulking phase because you're already sort of out of that ideal body fat percentage range for hypertrophy. And if you don't have the experience to run a structured fat loss phase, it might be easier just to try and recomp at the beginning. Of course, the other option here would be to start off with a fat loss phase and then go into bulking and cutting later, which will probably give you faster results if you know how to cut properly. Lastly, body recomposition might be a good idea if you're okay with slower progress. For some people, they would rather have the slower results and keep their body fat on the lower end. All right, now having talked about body recomposition, when should you go for a more bulking cutting approach? I would recommend that you bulk and cut if your results slow down with a body recomposition strategy. So it's totally fine to start off with body recomposition as long as you're getting good results with it. If you're keeping your weight stable or even if you're bringing your weight down very slowly and you're seeing visual changes and visual progress and you're building muscle, just keep on doing that. But if your results slow down and you find yourself stalling, then you might want to reconsider. You'll also want to switch to structured mass gaining and fat loss phases if you just want faster progress overall. So for people who really want the optimal results, it's best that you learn how to bulk and cut properly and we'll talk about that in a minute. Lastly, you should go for structured massing and fat loss phases if you're skinny to start. At some point, if you're starting off skinny, even if you converted all of your fat into muscle, you're still not going to be that big and if you want to get that size, you're going to have to put on some mass at some point. All right, next you should bulk and cut if you're able to go through massing and fat loss phases correctly. In terms of bulking, you'll want to be able to bulk at the correct rate. I did a video on clean versus dirty bulking, but my current recommendations for rates of gain are 1 to 1.5% of your body weight gained per month for beginners and 0.5 to 1% of your body weight gained per month for intermediates or more advanced athletes. From the fat loss end of things, if you want to bulk and cut, you'll need to know how to lose fat effectively, which means retaining your hard earned muscle while you strip off the excess fat. From the training end of things, you'll basically want to train the same as you are when you're massing. There are some nuances to this that are beyond this video. From a nutritional aspect, the main thing when you're cutting is that you want to keep your protein up, minimum 0.72 to 1.0 grams per pound of body weight per day is my current recommendation. And to make sure you're not losing muscle, I generally recommend having a maximum rate of loss of 1% of your body weight per week. All right, a few last recommendations. I think that every bodybuilder should learn how to lose fat effectively at some point. So if you've never done a fat loss phase, I think it's important at some point to learn how to do it properly. Now in terms of bulking and cutting versus recomp, as you become more experienced, you're going to have to move towards that structured mass gaining versus fat loss phases approach eventually, if your goal is optimized hypertrophy. So it's important to not be afraid of gaining some fat when you're in a bulking phase. But it's important to recognize that you don't need to and you shouldn't go overboard with your weight gain during bulking phases. Remember, an optimum body fat of 10 to 15% is actually still pretty low. And guys, for example, shouldn't really be losing sight of their abs in this body fat range. Lastly, if you meet the criteria in terms of who's able to recomp and you're able to, then it's really up to you whether you go for a body recomposition or bulking and cutting strategy. But I wanted to give you the pros and cons of both approaches to help you make your decision. That's all for now guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. 
I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. If you wanna make sure that you're bulking properly, check out my playlist on bulking optimally, where I go through all the important variables in terms of how to structure an optimal bulking phase. If you've been getting value from my channel, make sure you hit subscribe and share the channel with your fitness friends so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.